Okay, welcome to EVE Online. Uh, this is an errata video because I'm pretty sure I was in error, just subjectively I didn't have a large enough data set and I think I'm in error about the range. I'm not sure, but I, what I was going to do is I anchored this and I was going to, I got lost in YouTube and, and missed the deadline, but I was going to check if I get decloaked as soon as it anchors and it does an initial, initial test or whether it has to spool up before it does its first check after you've anchored it. Mm, I'm pretty sure it does a check as soon as you've it's finished anchored. Not sure though. But I'm, I'm leaning towards it does a first check it once it's finished anchored. So um, I've got two guys uh, really close. And I've got two guys way the hell out like dozens of AUs away in the plural so this is going to be definitive um it'll prove whether or not like earlier I was got lost in YouTube it's watching this really fascinating video on uh, the uh, Colt monitor really cool weapon anyway so um yeah the I didn't know the Thompson machine gun was using uh, pistol cartridges and that couldn't penetrate uh, the heavy doors back then of a car. I was like, oh. Anyways, sorry. Um, I'm just killing time until my defense finishes and the you can open it up. I'm not sure if it'll be live, but you can check when it's going to check because I'm pretty sure it's every 10 minutes. Now, the activation delay is, I'm not sure whether it's hinting whether if you, it finishes anchoring, then it delays on activation. Because normally, you know, on other uh, stuff, you've got a uh, activation duration, right? So the activation delay might hint that it takes 10 minutes till it does its check. And that's implying that it does a check every 10 minutes. But we're not sure because, you know, the nomenclature CCP uses is just so woefully inadequate. It's just blah. So, yeah. So I've got... How long do I have to wait? Okay, six minutes. So I've got this check coming up, which is going to be on the 40-minute mark. I've got one on, on 30 minute and 20 minute and 10. So I've got four checks to go through. So if you want to skip to the end uh, for this, go for it. I'm just killing time. I'm going to have to sit around and stare at this myself. So I'm just going to fill the air um, with commentary. So when, you, when, when we initially read the blurb, the article, it talked about system-wide and a chance and that's the two hints you got and you're like what the hell does that mean um initially when you saw the image uh, when you when you read it uh on the launcher it said mobile observatory and you're like "Ooh, can you plug it on your ship and wander around because it's mobile no it's the nomenclature of and as soon as you see the image of their article on it, you go, oh, it's a, a mobile, it's like a mobile sinosaurus or a mobile blah, 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 or a mobile depot or blah, blah, blah. You just, it's an anchoring thing. Oh, okay. So then you're like, okay, uh, system-wide, how much did it cost? How long did it last? And how often does it check? And none of those things are are documented it's something you have to figure out like I went on to the test server I got the blueprint uh, I used it in a uh, you know use the blueprint then you go buy all and you copy that buy all you can export it onto clipboard and then I went on to tranquility went to Jita and did the multi buy import got the list 42.2 million isk and the blueprint is listed as 150 million but whatever so <laughs> that's more expensive than any mobile you can think of 
okay? And it only lasts an hour and 40 minutes. That's 60 plus 40, that's 100 minutes. So that's, and the implication is every 10 minutes it does its check. Therefore, you've got 10 tries, or maybe 11, I don't know, I, I suck at math, but I'm pretty sure this hints at a delay after you've anchored it. I'm not sure. I want to test that later. I just, sorry, I lost my to board. I want to play another game. I just, I just want to make sure you guys are well informed and then I correct any mistakes that I do because, you know, I make mistakes and I'll just correct them. And this isn't, that's, this hasn't tra hit tranquility, thank God. But I've made mistakes on tranquility tests too. So hopefully you'll forgive me. And if you want sub, what do I care? It's, 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 this is what I'm... I started getting watches. Like, this used to be my own pri personal channel. This is not for you people. This is for me. Um, I upload videos so I can look back and go, okay, that's what CCP changed. Because CCP would change stuff. And they, they were like, what was it like before? And this is my attempt at documenting so when they screw up in the future i can go did it really screw it up or is it just my perception what was it like back then or what did they change or what did they do or how does this work or is is the forum blurb about or regeneration in belts in asteroid belts really true why are we depending on this because it just it this is a game we're supposed to play it not work at it you know it's annoying because most of the time when i'm playing a game it has to be immersive right it's got to be immersive okay well, less than two minutes so it's got to be immersive and i've got to enjoy it i want to feel like i've immersed myself in the game and if you keep breaking that immersion be through non-intuitive stupid non-documented crap then you're eventually going to get disillusioned of this game and just not play it anymore as i i've already played a, a mog that's spaceship science fiction stuff i'm looking forward to checking out uh elite dangerous or something else that'll fill the void but i i like the idea of a multiplayer online game that's a science fiction space simulator and the fact that i it's a, f a friend of mine long like 2003 uh said something really cogent he said i don't have to wait in a lobby to start a game i can just jump in and it's i just continue from where i was okay so we're coming up on the test so uh, 30 seconds now i'm assuming from what i tested before uh, that every 10 minutes it does a check and it automatically decloaks anything on grid and then it just doesn't for things that are too far away like outside descan range now that was my initial test with one character and it was it was only like four checks that i did and it wasn't like i said it wasn't a good data set so somebody said it, it there's a 40 percent chance so i'm like yeah that's probably a troll but when i dismiss stuff like that i go whoa oh so, whoa, uh. okay, so we know it's every 10 minutes, but how did I get, that's interesting, isn't it? And, but I didn't get, and the funny thing is, this is just an improved cloak. The others are covert cloaks. So, 75% of my guys were decloaked right then for that test. So, of course, now I'm going to, Recloak to test it again, and I have a 15 minute stabilization, which means I'm gonna miss one of the cycles. So that's interesting. Uh, also, did you notice that when it decloaked, I could instantly recloak? It didn't, there was no, if you get decloaked, you can instantly recloak it. So it's no. It doesn't give you the cycle, which I'm not sure is intent. I'm pretty sure it wasn't intended. I have, I'm pretty sure they have no idea about that. They just, they, they're not even, 
it's not even on their radar of dealing with. I'm sure they didn't intend for you to be able to instantly recloak after being decloaked by this thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was an oversight on their part. Because I'm pretty sure that's not intended. If it is... Be, or look at it this way. They don't give a living crap about us. So, because we've got to remember, they're onto something new right now. They don't care about this mechanic. They've said it. They're not going to change it. it. It's going into game. Guarantee you. They uh, they nerfed because of the whining. But nobody's going to whine about this. You can guarantee the blocks aren't going to whine about this. But yeah, because what do the blocks care? It's an anti-cloaking thing. They It costs 43 million. It lasts 10 checks. And that's the end of it. So somebody anchors something, you can see it system-wide, you just log off for two hours and come back. Or or just laugh because you can recloak instantly. What's that going to do? The only thing that's going to prevent is people denying systems to somebody. So it's a risk you're taking when you go AFK. Somebody might be... So what people are going to do is be at an off-grid way the hell deep safe spot and good luck scanning the whole system but uh, I definitely do that but how, rel how reliable is this at decloaking something so if it got if it has 10 checks so theoretically if you got a 10% chance of decloaking something you've got a pretty good bet that you'll decloak something in 10 checks and then you can scan it down, and then you can gank it. Now, it goes even further. If this is a reliable way, and I'm wrong from my last video, that you, as you saw, it they were both decloaked, the first check. If it's a reliable way of decloaking, and it seems like I'm wrong, and it seems like it is, eventually... Uh, then you can just sit back, decloak something, and then that sleeping person who's trying to deny the system while he's AFK to anybody who is at keys and trying to enjoy gameplay when there's somebody cloaked out there. It's a really uncomfortable feeling. Uh, especially it feels unfair because they could be they could be impacting your game without them actually being at keys. Probably playing COD with buddies and just keeping a half a semi AFK kind of thing, right? But th that's fair. That's fair. If you want to run the game and be at keys and check occasionally, that's fine. It just seems unfair that they could be sleeping or at work or out of the house and you know, totally away from their keyboard. Oh, yeah. oh God, this thing is so long. Yeah, this is the thing about this. I want to play another game. I'm not interested in playing even online at the moment. It's not because of these new things. It is a drain. Um, but it's like, look, adapt or freaking die, you know? But it, it's it's not the fact that EVE Online is boring to me right now. It's just that they've taken away so much that I found enjoyable about the game. Like, or at least I know that well, <laughs> there are certain things I enjoy in the game, like ice mining. Why do I enjoy ice mining instead of asteroid mining? Because it's a reliable income. And it's safe, especially in high sec. Now, the mobs of... If I occasionally see an ice belt forming in my local area and the mobs haven't arrived yet, I can reliably get decent income before they get, I get swarmed. Um, and the local area used to be a magnet for incursions. And miners would just flee from the constellation, and I'd have it pretty much all to myself. What they didn't know, well, it's a risk. So. Care Bears and Griefers are risk-averse, so 
they, it was a risk, so they just buggered off, which is fine with me. But for me, the spawn difference between an asteroid belt, which is huge, you get battleships and everything, and an ice belt, an anomaly, common anomaly, you only get a really small, very light spawn, like two or three frigates, maybe the destroyer, maybe, you know, don't get close to a cruiser. Sometimes you'll get annoyed by an ECM frigate and the, the incursions love going after drones more than anything. You can't spoof them with a remote rep. And it was really interesting. Uh, and it was fun. But they removed that just by at random because now it's not a magnet anymore. I'm sure the magnets moved elsewhere to another constellation because... Uh, yeah, it just seems that incursions would re reliably spawn in the area all the time, and then it just moved elsewhere. That's it just stopped. So, snore. I'm just trying to entertain myself because I know all you guys are skipping ahead. I would. And this is stuff I... It's its not like I haven't talked about this stuff before. So you're not missing much. Um, oh, God. Jeez. The, the latest stuff on the launcher is hilarious. Can you believe that? Well, they had... They had CDI... CDIA files. They were noob training videos. Which are really cool, actually. And, I, and it was in my recommended videos. Um, but they just stopped. What they'll do is they'll do something like the uh, EVE updates thing. That was really cool. You could They had they had projected in the future updates coming up. Te little teases of what's happening. And they slowly it slowly petered out. And now they just don't care. There's, there's nothing. It's just like what we have and what in the past. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like nothing what we're planning on doing. You know, that was, that was a... That was great. It was like cool, like something to look forward to. And then it just, it everything they do, like they used to have a website, just like they have now, in the past, and they just nuked it a long time ago. Currently, what I did was I went to the website, and it just seems to be on one page. So I just printed it PDF because I know in the future they're just going to delete it. It doesn't represent our viewpoint of the game at the moment. Mm. Or something like that. They're just they're just huge 2003 idiots, or you know, it's just the they're they haven't changed their mindset since the early dot com days. And and uh, and uh, what is it? Uh, I forget the the character's name. But um, the greed is good. The whole greed is good, and the whole history is dead kind of thing. They, they're rewriting history, and it's just, for God's sake, get your head out of your butt, you know? It's like, could you just please have some continuity and, and build on decent stuff you had in the past instead of just, what they're doing is just, they're just, what they do is they, they reinvent the wheel, and then within a month or two, they just drop it. Onto, it's like the new squirrel. Um... Like I've said many times, it's they had an ex-employee do an expose on their on their business model, and their business model is everything gets decided in meetings, and those that yell the loudest, the squeaky wheel, gets the oil. Um, Hilmar loves his gaming article breaking record thing, or you know the griefers have this great role-playing story about that how they infiltrated somebody and slowly carefully you know with great planning it's like no they just took advantage of your stupid s systems you could fly a freighter through sideways to rip off somebody who's just trying to play the game you know yeah and all these amazing stories of those those psych ops and cheetah from the code guys who just like used the no it's like you probably just use a sand sock puppet um to set up this this amazing scam and just just brag about it and you a bunch of freaking idiots so yeah it's just like yeah it's just a useless horrible game with griefers who are given loopholes constantly and coddled by the ccp people because that's where they get the stories from they want to encourage this thing because it gives them news articles and that's what they want they're obsessed. Hilmar is obsessed. 
He's an idiot. Yeah, I'm freaking... Ugh, it's so annoying. Okay, so you know the guy in charge? The guy in charge is this strutting, egotistical, e moron who wants to be, you know, for him, he's lost in this bubble where people kiss his ass constantly. And he thinks the proper sociable way to be social in life and in Eve is to kiss his ass, but he doesn't see it that way. It's like, oh, it's we're all family. It's like you're being nice to me, I'd be nice to you. Because that's how it works. Yeah, that's that's how corruption works, you idiot. So yeah, I mean it's just he he's obsessed with these ridiculous ideas. It's like look, it's like what you have a game. You have customers. Document follow up in the documentation if you build on something continue it and if people want to if like role players used to here's a here's an illustration of how bad it is over a decade ago there was this storyline called the tetramon cult or something i'm probably pronouncing it wrong but it was an it's it was a really cool story and you're like wow this is a backstory about the the a more secret political stuff trying to influence you know a really neat npc thing about influencing the power behind the throne kind of thing it was really cool i might be getting the story completely wrong because they deleted the whole anyway so it it doesn't matter I'll, uh, the punchline's coming up so they had a storyline that the role players in the community the socializers they improved on they fleshed out the characters they fleshed out what they knew about the game and it was really really cool about what they did and what ccp did was they saw this they killed off all the characters and they just moved on they just dropped the idea and just killed off all the characters and walked away from it like oh you guys are you're taking this too far and they just killed off all the characters and just walked away from it and you're like but this is a mog but CCP is like, this is our game. And that's their problem. Every once in a while, CCP, I think... See, the forums are a bad... The forums are accessible. And they're horrible. They give CCP encouragement for being douchebags because the, C the CCP vision of the game's community is probably the forums. And the forums are just horrible cesspool trash and misinformation and crap and whining and Jesus it's like you go to reviews of games you only get it like you only get a review from people who hate the game or they love it completely you won't get reviews from people who are like oh yeah it's totally an average experience you know that's the problem with the forums the problem with CCP is they don't know how to play the game because they, a they've never played the game and interacted with players on a equal basis um but they never actually go, oh, I want to have fun in a game. What can I do? What's profitable? They probably just have cheats to give themselves money when they're bored. So they have no idea about the give and take of if we want to do anti-cloaking, what do the player's mindset, what does it mean for me? Uh, immerse yourself in the game and go, okay, so I've got warp core stabs and cloaking what do they what do i use them for do i use them a lot what's the drawbacks for me what what is annoying for me as a player who likes work cores as opposed to like deconstruct it as opposed to here we go One minute all right i got four minutes so and i got two checks left so Here's the thing. If you're actually knowledgeable at the game, you're going to go, okay, so what's the drawback for the people and the pros? What's the pros and cons for both sides? What's the pros and cons for the Care Bears? What's the pros and cons for the Griefers? I mean, we'll call them PVEers and PVPers. You know, what What are the draw drawbacks and um, advantages for both sides? Um, the drawbacks for from a care perspective is that number one 
warp core stabs on a hauler or anything big is useless because they just bump you and there's no matter what you're you're how many yeah it's just useless on stuff that you can get away and you're aligned and you're all ready to warp off the issue is that warp core stab tech 2 would only give one point so it's like i if i'm a caber i don't it's it's like why aren't you giving two plus points because for us the care bears the pvpers see when you first think about work or stabs you're like okay i've got i've got a i've got one work or stab that means that no matter what as long as they have long points not scrams i can get away no that's not true pvpers if you've got multiple pvpers or multiple modules each module on you is one point so those only a, if you're one person and you've got a finite amount of low slots all they have to do is gang up on you and you're pointed you can't get away bumping multiple players it's stacking it's it was a it was a lose-lose from the get-go for me the only thing that ever saves me is the light ship maneuverable I've got three warp core stabs on my expedition frigates and I had expedition frigates the endurances have three low slots and I can have a maximum of three and that will defeat a faction scram which has three points right so the only way for this to be of use to me is to a accept that my targeting range is going to be really short which means that my ability to take advantage of um, range increasing mining laser stuff is going to be diminished uh, I, it had no impact on my drone bandwidth so but uh, you really only it, basically the warp core stabilized for me was to protect myself against the um the mortis legion that do spawn and especially the battleship i've had a couple of run-ins with that <laughs> so they point and the occasional bomber stealth bomber that logs on in the system and warps to that belt because the, once you know where the belt is it's not going to move so it'll warp to that belt and try to point you and they have faction scrams potentially because that's what they use the Russians do use the faction scrams and it'll get my porpoise potentially my, my hauler if I'm not having three warp core steps I usually have speed so I can work back and forth quick but it was 40 seconds yeah I mean that was the my optimal setup that i liked doing i could feel that i had some degree of safety that i could make myself less of an easy target and that was the whole thing of my last video i think i was ranting at or the one prior all right here we go so last time three of my guys got decloaked no matter the range 15 seconds so 10 more seconds so let's see now so it it doesn't seem to me bearing on both of my guys at long range were decloaked oh one so one guy got decloaked okay instead of three it's now one so yeah oh and there's no see there's no there's there's no decloaking cycle so that's tested so I've got one more check. This sucker, it, I don't have enough cycles. It's going to take forever to get it, pin it down. But it does look like you have a chance to get decloaked. I'm not sure about the math. I'd have to do a bunch of tests to figure out the exact one. I'm sure people have. Who? It's probably easy for somebody running a dozen accounts. You know, I'm sure there's people out there like that. Um, I've got six accounts I could do it but it's just it's a pain to actually do the red tape to get them on uh, singularity and I just don't want to do it um, 
but yeah, I mean, this is definitive enough for most of us that I was incorrect about the inability to decloak past 15 EU. And I've tested that. Uh, the next test, when I get around to it, I just want to go play another game. This game is absolutely dead boring. It's a screensaver game with a built-in chat function. Who the hell cares? And the the blocks in Nullsec, I, I've never been attracted to their game style. Really, honestly. It's just... Ugh. So it's got two more checks. Or, sorry, one more check and it probably dies. So yeah, it's got one more check and then it dies. So I'll just wait around till then. Yeah, it's just... Every once in a while, I just get off the mood from playing Eve. It's just... The more you play it, the more you see under the hood and you realize how woefully inadequate the game is. Yeah, it's like CCP is like they they realize that they they can't immerse themselves in the game. They can't see the pros and cons from both sides properly. All they see is the ass kissing from the no blocks. Who are yeah, you don't know where the null blocks end and the CCP ass begins, you know. So, all they do is get angry, it seems, every once in a while that we're not taking them seriously. And why would we? We play the game. They have no idea how we play the game. So, why would we even pay attention to anything they do? Like, their events? There's nothing good about most of their events. Like, that, that the hunt event? That's cool because it encourages you to learn about descanning. And which is a part of the game that's relevant to a lot of people, but not for Care Bears. But it, it's fun to explore that area, to get competent playing and have fun doing it while learning about another aspect of the game. That's a very rare occurrence. Most of the time, they just like don't even care about their stupid events. It, it's ridiculous. And I. And I think every once in a while, CCP realizes that nobody's taking them seriously, and they screw the game around just to feel like they're relevant, like people are actually taking them seriously now, you know? And it's upsetting because after a while, it becomes obvious that's exactly what they're doing. They are a bunch of spoiled children who hate not being taken seriously or not being paid attention to. And every once in a while, they F the game up like, you know, taking away people's, they promised assets to be safe at Upwells by asset safety. And then they removed that because nobody was taking them seriously. They were going to screw the game. Not because nobody was taking them seriously about asset safety. No, nobody's taking them seriously. They don't feel it. Every once in a while, they get really angry. And then they just screw the game around just to make sure that we get upset and, and focused on them instead of just ignoring them and just going on our way. And this is their way of being douches, basically. So yeah, I mean, getting decloaked reliably, and you'll you'll have to probably have to wait a while till you decloak them. I mean, somebody said forty percent, but I'm not sure about that. But there's there's the offer no proof. I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll let that get published through my filters. I block all comments, just make sure that I'm not getting trolled. But it was like, yeah, 40%, possibly. And I didn't do a big enough data set. So eventually, my own good senses go, even if I didn't get that comment. We were like, maybe I'd have been test, test a game with multiple, because my data set was really small last time. So I was like, man, I could be fooling myself. And I think I was. Actually, I know I was. Because we, we saw that... All three got decloaked. Uh, so boring. Yeah. Uh, bloody hell. 
Yeah, I mean, look, the the nullification, isn't that so hilarious? They, they added passive nullification to shuttles. The mindset behind that is obvious. You know? It's so obvious. They are just getting sops to people. So they can... See, p griefers... Risk-averse PvPers are griefers. Risk-averse PvEers are Care Bears. And both sides want no risk, high gain. And blowing up shuttles is just... it. See, <laughs> a shuttle that's passive nullification is not protection. It's a lure. Is shuttles? In Nullsec? Are you kidding? Oh, that's that's not going to encourage... See, that's not going to encourage people using shuttles to get around as encouraging people to do pipe bombs again. And I really like the fact that there's no pipe bombs because I have... I go through Nullsec with uh, implants a lot in light ships because I know that the pendulum has swung the other way and people aren't doing pipe bombs anymore because, you know, it's risky because they could get ganked. You know, in return, so that's ooh, it's risk, but, but it falls in and out of favor over the years, and so far it's fallen out of favor. But it's going to encourage people to use pipe bombing, pipe bombs again, smart bombing battleships, because of this. <laughs> you you know it. Shuttles nullification. That's hilarious. <laughs> But yeah, it's, isn't it a ridiculous thing that shuttles have nullification? It's like, what? It's also ridiculous that they made warp core stabs active while still keeping the passive on the Venture and the DST. It's like, A, the DST is going to get bumped, so you're dead. But the Venture? It's got this hidden... That's just going to confuse the hell out of noobs to play the game in the future like wait why is my you know why is my venture <laughs> it's just uh no it's going to encourage more adventure use that's for sure i mean if i was going to low sec and i was mining i would seriously consider a venture because why the hell not right oh god i want to play another game yeah, see, my conscience is making me do this because I want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was I was sure that my previous video was true, that I'd done it right and the decloakings and non-decloakings were because of range. And I'd been fooled by that. But I was sure doing this test that it was gonna I was not going to get decloaked and seeing both get decloaked pretty much put the nail in that coffin, didn't it? So here we go. 22 seconds. So we've had... So my magnet hasn't been decloaked so far. But that's just... We're just going to ignore that because we don't have a big enough data set. But we've got three buzzards, all fit the same. And three were decloaked. And now just one was. There we go. And now those were, these weren't. So it doesn't seem to me like I was correct about there being it. And, and look, you can just cloak instantly. There's no issues at all. Um, it seems to me that I'm not only wrong, but potentially completely wrong about it being affected by range. Because I'm more, look, I'm... 85 AU away from this is the 87.8 away from the mobile decloaker so it can't be modified by range and it's obviously not modified by anything it's just a straight simple percentage chance I I can't definitively say it's 40% I'm sure I, I don't know how that commenter got that 40% thing but so far, let's go with that number. Because I don't have a big enough... 
data set to prove or disprove that. Um, so we'll definitely go with it. I haven't been decloaked yet with this one, I think. Oh, it was earlier, so it's, it's not a fact that I'm in a different ship uh, before I started the video. So yeah, um, it's now it's only got what? It's got eight minutes, so it's it's gonna go poof. I've tried getting close to it. I've tried. Can I get close to it? Can I unanchor it? Can I scoop it before it dies? No, it's it's like all the others that you anchor. It's gonna die. Well, except for the depot, of course. But it's not a depot. You can't scoop it. It's not got the same mechanics. It's got something like you know the what is it the um the ridiculous um uh the d scan it hides you from d scan but it doesn't hide the thing that's hiding you from d scan from d scan <laughs> it's, yeah it's that one was, was ridiculous and the mobile sinusaural jammer i that that's you can't scoop that i'm almost positive stuff like that so yeah let's see so it dies regardless. You can't scoop it. Doesn't go unanchored. Um, I'll just wait around till it to just show you because you know. I mean, why believe me? We just wait until you actually see it with your own eyes happen. So I'll keep an eye on that. And yeah, it it's definitely an issue where. Well, it could do one last check before it dies, but I highly doubt it. But it would be interesting, wouldn't it? But yeah, as you can see, you can see it <laughs> from across this system too. Yeah, I don't think you can. See, you can't see the mobile uh, D scan inhibitor from across the system. Pretty down, darn sure about that. I think I have to tested that already. But you can see it on D scan, which is hilarious. It's like, oh, what's that over there? <laughs> Let's go investigate. <laughs> It's such a ridiculous mechanic. I mean, oh, <laughs> you wonder if CCP even knew about this mechanic being scannable itself. <laughs> it's just <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> or they probably just, you know, they probably listened to some whiny CSM person or Nullbeck ass kisser and just allowed this loophole. And of course made the entire thing useless to everybody. Just because CCP, you know? They're just idiots. You just, you just take something and make it completely useless for its intended purpose, but they think they're smart. It's like, okay. All right. Five minutes. God damn it. I hate this. I want to go... I'm playing about... I used, a week ago I was playing a dozen games, and I've whittled, whittled that down to about two or three. Just because they're just not interesting to play. And I don't find EVE Online that interesting to play all the time. You know, I'll get into it for a while. Um, but it's just... I'm waiting around for the high sec ice. I've been ordered not to mine low sec. And now they've gotten rid of my fun little endurance. Which is useless for income because I'm way more I'm way better off going to high sec and just waiting around till the ice belt forms and I get way more money using my max than I would ever do with my low sec endurance. It's just fun to relax in an ice belt and mine for hours. It's just for me that's fun but I'd be A, be in order not to because you know I'm blue with the people who don't like people mining ice. I'm like it's free what the hell is your problem but whatever I have to respect my leadership because you know why cause trouble right if if you're not in this for multiplayer you know why play the game right so yeah i mean eventually well not eventually i'm sure years from now things will change but for now i just can't mine in that system which is a shame um, there, there's other low sec systems with three ice belts. I can go over there and mine. Um, and the fact that I can reliably decloak people 
is going to prevent these. See, griefers are risk averse PVPers. And all griefers, all most PVPers are risk averse in this game. Of any note that you meet. Some aren't. But most of the people you disrespect because they're morons, they are risk averse. They'd like to talk about Big Storm, about, oh, you, you bring tank, we'll bring more DPS. No, as you, you bring risk, they won't bother. That's it. And it's risk, it's not of being killed, but it's being found out of being, there's any element of risk or, or calculation they have to calculate that makes that target hard. Like, say, I would have three work course stabs on my endurances. That other person doesn't know that. But once they find that out, they will know I'll fit that, and they will have to counter that. And that means fitting more than one module on their ship for pointing, which lowers their tank, which lowers their chances with other people, which increases their risk. If they don't like that, makes it a little bit harder for a target. And now they know that their point, their support, faction scram, will defeat anything. So. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's just so annoying. I was going somewhere with that. I totally forgot. Where was I going with that? I don't care. I've got a few minutes to figure it out. Two minutes to figure it out. And I'm going to end this fucking video and go effing play Stellaris or something. Stellaris is fun. Uh, I've got oxygen not included. It's a bit annoying, but it's kind of fun. I'll try it. And I've got the Starcraft campaign. I want to be replaying on hard and or brutal. I forget. No, I think it's just hard. I'm playing on. I think it's brutal. And then I've got freaking their billions on Apocalypse. <laughs> That's crazy fun. Get my ass kicked so many times. All right, let's yeah. La, la, la. yeah, you'll see this thing go poof. Now, it doesn't have any animation yet or of nothing for effects or anything or nothing. It's got zero image. It's got zero image even if you bring this up. It's just nothing, null so far. But who cares, right? Until it's in the game. If it's even going to go into the game. So, oh, right. The counter to this, now that we know it's reliable, is Lachesis's with sensor boosters and signal amplifiers in the lows, which makes it almost impossible. And at deep safe spots, at, you know, beyond descan range. Um, and those should be almost safe. I have never tested it definitively, but you can be damn sure it's almost impossible to scan you down. Um, I'll be testing that for sure um, with you know with the best uh, skilled uh, Hereticus has the best stuff and he will try to scan down somebody who's in a Lachesis who's got the absolute best sensor boosters and single amplifiers and grail uh, not grail uh, it would be the magnetometric um, uh, ECCM thing. So the ECCM scripts up the wazoo and try to crank that sensor st signal up to maximum. That would probably be the new AFK cloak thing. See? Poof. Gone. And no check. Or uh, we're assuming no check has done at the last second. Okay. There you go. Thank God. Whew.